Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Christian, HR Manager from WorkBank, your job site with Malasakit. Thanks for joining us for today's WorkBank Think Tank. I hope everyone is well and safe at home. Most of us in the labor force are gearing up to go back to work. If not next week, then sometime in the next month. But you know, the pandemic has changed the way we work and the entire employment landscape. Jobs that were in demand before may not be anymore, but jobs that weren't so hot before have become in demand now. This afternoon, we will learn the emerging employment trends from our special guest from the Bureau of Local Employment of the Department of Labor and Employment. Before we start though, let me introduce my co-host, WorkBank's marketing specialist, Romar Balani. Good afternoon, Christian. Good afternoon to our viewers. Thanks so much for joining us today. For those who don't know us yet, WorkBank is the only job site that lets you job hunt with benefits. We offer free trainings to make you more employable. While you apply, we provide support like grab ride discounts for your job interviews. And WorkBank users also get the WorkBank eCard, a first in the jobs market, which entitles you to lifestyle perks like food and fitness freebies with partner merchants. If you're looking for jobs with benefits, then please sign up on workbank.com. For now though, let's get on with the program. And by the way, if you have any questions, please type them in the comments section and we'll try to get to them after the presentation. And now to discuss the emerging careers and skills is a deputy program manager of labor market information, research and career guidance advocacy division from the Bureau of Local Employment of the Department of Labor and Employment, Ms. Grace Baldoza. Hi, Ms. Grace. Hi, Romar. Thank you for inviting us. Good afternoon to all our participants. So um, my topic for this afternoon would be about the emerging careers and relevant skills in the new normal. Yes. And I, I, we think po na it's very interesting, especially right now, na uh, everyone is talking about the new normal. So um, we're expecting a lot from this, and uh, we hope that we'll learn a lot. So um, we'll, uh, we'll give you the floor now, Miss. Uh... Sure. Okay. All right, let me share my screen. Okay. So for this afternoon, let me provide you an outline first of what I'm going to present. So we start with the employment landscape. And then we have the pre-pandemic outlook, employment outlook. And then we'll have the new normal emerging jobs and relevant skills. And then the future of digital careers in the Philippines. So first, we take a look at the building blocks of the labor force. So this is based on the January 2020 labor force survey of the Philippine uh, Statistics Authority. So here you would see that the Filipino workforce comprise 73 million working age population and 45 million are in the labor force with an employment rate of 94.7%. In January 2020, the country's employment expanded by 4% or 1.6 million additional jobs compared to January 2019 last year. The continuous employment growth in the services sector and agriculture sector with 969,000 for services and 817,000 jobs in the agriculture sector were enough to offset the slight decline in the industry sector, which shed 163,000 jobs. So the January 2020 estimates show that unemployment rate remained at 5.3% year on year. So still it's the lowest recorded unemployment rate for all of the January survey rounds since 2011. However, the unemployment level in January 2020 slightly increased by 9,000, resulting to 2.39 million unemployed workers from 2.28 million in January 2019. Youth unemployment rate declined to 13.6% in January 2020 from 14.2% 
over the same period last year and a decline of 0.14% in underemployment level is also observed in January 2020, reporting a total of 6 million underemployed workers. So similarly, the underemployment rate decreased by 0.6%, recording a 15.4% underemployment rate in January 2019, compared to this year's 14.8%. So that's a lot of numbers there. <laughs> All right, we move to the next slide. So what is the pre-pandemic employment outlook? Next slide, please. So prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, the labor market was already experiencing disruption brought about by the digital revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution, otherwise known as FIRE or 4IR, is an era characterized by digital technologies, which provides a multitude of challenges and opportunities to the labor market. So some notable impacts of the fire as identified by the World Economic Forum are first, of course, disruption of jobs. It is imminent as skills demand changes with the advancement in technology. Also inequality may worsen without relevant interventions for the youth and other vulnerable workers. Soft skills are also needed to cope with the changing environment and composition of workers in the workplace. So thus, there is a need to leverage on distinct human skills given the digital transformation. So here you are seeing the Jobs Fit LMI 2022, 2022 report. It provides, it helps job seekers, especially students, make informed education, training, and career choices uh, published by the Department of Labor and Employment, Bureau of Local Employment. So labor market information and industries that will create jobs and the skills needed for the future were provided in this report, which also aids in policy decision making and direction setting, both for the public and private sectors. So this report has been widely disseminated and is being used by our stakeholders from partner government agencies, academe, and also industry partners. These reports are available in a national full report, as well as regional reports available at uh, at our website or through the link provided in this slide. So in Jobs with 2022, next slide please, yes. Uh, we have identified key employment generators or what we call KEGs. This is one of the key findings of Jobs with 2022. And we have 10 KEGs referring to major industry groups with the greatest potential to generate employment and absorb the bulk of the workforce in the years to come. The kegs identified by the report are ITBPM, which is our top keg, followed by wholesale and retail trade, and then transport and logistics. We have manufacturing, construction, agribusiness, banking and finance, hotel, restaurant, and tourism, education, and health and wellness. So these reports also identified two emerging industries. So we have um, renewable energy and shipbuilding repair or the industry groups that are growing at a faster rate compared to others that exhibits potential growth and prosper. On the next slide, we have the emerging jobs. So still based on the Jobs Fit 2022, we have the list of emerging jobs related to Industry 4.0. So these jobs mainly focus on the use of the internet, social media, artificial intelligence, big data and research, and information on, on both the demand side and supply side of the labor market are detailed in the Jobs Fit report. So here you would see there's business process analyst, data scientist, design engineer, and so on up to TNDS driver that was projected also in the Jobs Fit 2022 report. Uh, in said report, we also have an action agenda with issues gathered from the private sector, academe and government through rounds of national and regional consultations. So the, on the next slide, we have to look at the new normal now. Um, with COVID-19, the reality of a VUCA world I'm sure you're all familiar with the VUCA. The world has come clearly um, to a world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. 
So lots of countries were actually having um, sustained positive employment outlook prior to COVID. And then when the pandemic uh, hit the countries, we have it has huge impact on employment already. So such health crisis along with the digital disruption changed the world of work affecting millions of workers. So with the physical distancing, personal hygiene and sanitation protocols, lots of major industries or major adjustments has to be taken for us to be able to sustainably adapt to the new normal. So we made an initial assessment of our kegs Sorry, let's move back to the previous slide. Yeah, so we made an initial assessment of our kegs, and these are the industries that we see will stand to gain, lose, or some may give mixed signals to us. So with the green arrows, these are the industries that are seen to gain. First is ITBPM. It is seen to remain as our top uh, employment generator as it offers the most flexibility to do work. Health and wellness is also expected to gain with our fight against the health crisis, of course. Agribusiness may also thrive with the launch of the Department of Agriculture's Plant, Plant, Plant program, as well as the Balik Provincia program. And then construction is also expected to jumpstart the economy with the resumption of public works and key build, build, build infrastructure projects that, that will employ thousands of workers. However, there are vulnerable or some people call it hard hit sectors, the ones with the red arrow. First is the hotel, restaurant and tourism. It stands to have the highest or being the biggest loser in the pandemic given the strict health restrictions. Transportation will most likely be down also because of the strict government protocols and physical distancing and travel restrictions. The increase in demand for delivery services may help logistics, but we have yet to see whether its impact would be significant. Banking and finance may also experience a slump because of the gloomy economic outlook that affects spending. And education may also be negatively affected because of, this, of the uncertainty of whether the classes would resume or start uh, uh, this June or August or to some extent, whether parents would still enroll their children for this school year given the pandemic. Now, as to wholesale and retail trade, it offers mixed signals considering that physical stores may be limited in operation, but online sellers may thrive in this new normal. Manufacturing may also be affected by some restrictions, especially for the non-essential goods. So next slide, please. Okay, we see the emerging jobs in the new normal. So despite the economic outlook towards recession, there are still jobs that remain to be in demand in the new normal. First, there is a strong and fast growing demand for healthcare workers, those ones bravely fighting at the front lines during this pandemic. Online companies also have big advantage during the pandemic, hence the high demand for online workers, freelancers, or what we call giggers, doing home-based work. And tech companies continue hiring despite the pandemic. So video game makers and app or software developers are still in demand. Additionally, warehouse work, next slide please, and construction related work are foreseen to, to remain in demand with the new normal as manual labor would continue to complement automation in these sectors. So considering these jobs, we now look at what skills do we need to survive and get back on track in a sustainable way post-pandemic. So as a COVID-19 pandemic fast-tracked the fourth industrial revolution, we have no choice. We are already thrust into the fourth IR or digital revolution. Workers must be armed with the relevant digital and 21st century skills to survive and remain competitive with the disruption in the labor market. So these um, skills include adaptability and flexibility, meaning being able to adapt to the ever-changing world of work and continuously updating and refreshing skills, 
Next, we have tech savviness, meaning being able or comfortably uh, using tech tools and effectively using them. Then next is creativity and innovation. Uh, it means that we need human ingenuity to invent and dream or produce new products or new ways of working. And next we have data literacy. It's also important because data is a critical asset nowadays and the skill to understand the data and make, use, make good use of them for decision making is critical also. The next one is creativity, sorry, critical thinking. So objectively evaluating information and making informed decisions. That's also important. Leadership is also important. It's a critical skill to bring about the best and inspire teams, especially now that we are doing remote work. Most are doing remote work. So encouraging collaboration virtually is critical. Next is emotional intelligence, EQ, to be aware or expressing your own self and also being aware of others' emotions is also um, an essential skill during this time. And last but not the least, of course, commitment to lifetime or lifelong learning. So there are endless opportunities that you can find online to continue learning new skills. And both workers and employers are encouraged to invest in human capital development during this time to reskill and upskill because uh, numerous digital learning platforms are available. They are easily accessible online to develop the skills and both technical and soft skills must be strengthened in order to ensure that the Filipino workforce would be able to adapt to the new normal and remain competitive. So next slide, moving forward. We see that technology would continue to take a pivotal role in ensuring sustained business operations and continued employment in the new normal labor market. So we still put premium to occupational safety and health in the workplace, which is paramount to the DOLES mandate. We have regularly issued labor advisories for the guidance of employers and workers to ensure safe and humane working conditions. Also, there are numerous, uh, there are various legislation being heard at the Congress promoting flexible work or remote work and strengthening infrastructure as requisites of the new normal. First, we have, for example, Senate Bill number 1469 or the National Digital Careers Act, supporting the growth and development of digital careers in the. We also have Senate Bill 1470 or the National Digital Transformation Act providing for a national digital transformation policy in the country. So let me also just say that uh, in the new normal, as we recover, the DOLE has also developed an employment recovery plan, which aims to help stimulate the economy by assisting employers to preserve existing employment and create new jobs, while at the same time ensuring workers' protection and welfare. So the plan would provide a menu of policies and programs anchored on the bounce back plan for post quarantine scenarios. So full cycle employment facilitation would remain as an essential service to our delivered by our public employment service offices in the LGUs. And of course we have our Dolly regional and field offices as well. And we need to further sustain our effort because we are shifting to a new normal and there's no going back anymore. So in summary, let me emphasize that adapting to the new normal means ensuring that today's workforce is well equipped for the digital world. We have, um, we have been encouraging job seekers and workers and of course employers also to take advantage of this opportunity to upskill and reskill and be prepared for when things bounce back. So we that the Dolly would continue to work doubly hard. We've been, we've been also, we've also faced the uh, shocking impact of COVID-19, but well, I guess everyone does, but uh, we continue to strive. And we, as, uh, I mean, the job seekers 
ourselves would also have to work on our own to improve our skills because there's no one else who could help us except ourselves. So I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and um, we open the floor now for questions or no more. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Ms. Grace. So um, I think it was a very wonderful discussion. Um, to akin personally, uh, there were two things that struck me. First is um, when we were talking about skills, you mentioned something about um, the workforce have, uh, must have emotional intelligence. And it just happened that the previous webinar we had was about emotional intelligence and also mental health. So. Uh, it resonates with our audience, especially those who are following Work Bank today. And another is um, when you mentioned something about, you know, upskilling yourself, uh, making sure that you are open to continuous learning. And that's also something that Work Bank uh, severely advocates even before, uh, before COVID-19 uh, struck. Um, what about you, Christian, on the HR side? Anong, anong nakuha mo dito sa, ano, sa talk ni Ms. Grace? Uh, okay, for, for me, no, Romar, uh, what really struck me the, the most was the emerging jobs. I mean, there were jobs mentioned that I have not even heard before, like, you know, nanotechnologist, uh, genomicist. I mean, I understand that these are not the, the most in-demand jobs in terms of vacancies, but these are our jobs that are focusing on you know careers with the most growth potential. I mean, before during our time, Deba, the, the most in demand jobs were nursing, HRM, and, and business management. So seeing these emerging jobs only shows the ever-changing industry trends in the country. So especially right now, because of, of the, the pandemic, everyone really has to, all the workforce really need to upskill and reskill. Uh, Ms. Grace is actually very correct when, when she mentioned about the reskill because tayo lang naman talaga din ang, ang, ang makakapag-improve ng skills natin eh, for labor. And another thing is yung importance of technology and ad adaptability. Me personally, I've, I've seen people, you know, uh, right even before this pandemic, na they were really adjusting very well. Dahil from, imagine from face-to-face -face transactions, everything now is being done online. So yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, totoo yan. Tapos, um, it, it's actually refreshing na ano, well, not really refreshing, pero... Uh, Miss Grace, can you share with us yung experience din ninyo sa Dole na you mentioned no? uh, when COVID struck, kumbaga nagkaroon din ng changes sa inyo. What changes happened? Well, um, first, uh, first and foremost, uh, we have to operate in a skeleton workforce also while implementing a national program, um, a, so a national social protection program that is CAMP the COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program. And so uh, all our uh, offices were actually overwhelmed also with a huge number of um, applications. And it's just that uh, I think it's a common experience for everyone that we were all shocked. <laughs> we, at first, we were in a scramble, but eventually we were also able to cope and um, yeah, I think the IT infrastructure is also a major um, consideration or concern nowadays. Um, not everyone would have internet access to be able to do work from home. Uh, not everyone, well, but when I say internet access, stable internet access, right? And also, I think... Um, in one of the webinars I attended, they also mentioned of, well, you also mentioned it earlier, the mental health concern, because uh, we're all in different conditions trying to cope with this crisis. And it's good if we have someone, if we are staying in the family or uh, we're staying with our loved ones, but there are some people who have to stay in their dorms alone and to cope with this alone. So it's pretty difficult also. So I think... Um, 
I hope this is a once in a lifetime experience that we don't have to experience again. But still, um, reskilling and upscaling would be our very, um, it would not cure everything, but it would help mm -hmm. us cope. Um, definitely, there would still be, well, hopefully not, but in case there would be another crisis that we have to face we have to be armed with the proper skills, both soft and hard skills, to be able to manage and survive the, ch uh, the, the changes, the ever-changing uh, labor market landscape, as we say. Yes, we agree, Ms. Grace. Um, Christian, will there be any changes then sa, ano, sa how we do work at WorkBank then, or how we do, <laughs> uh, kumbaga yung, ano, yung pinaka business din natin? Yes, uh, definitely. Of course, you are correct, Romar. No? Even before the, the pandemic has started, we already also started uh, digitalization of our products, of our processes. No? And all our structures are, are being done online. Naren. Because again, tulad ng sabi ni Ms. Grace kanina, uh, because of the pandemic, Talaga limited lahat ng resources natin, even us. So uh, it's it's a good thing that of course we are a technology company, and we were able to to cope up uh, immediately as soon as the lockdown or the quarantine has started. We were able to adapt quite fast, naman. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so um. Christian, uh, Miss Grace, I think it's time we looked into the question. So let me read the first one. Um, so question from Miss Anna Manriza Landicho. So I would like to ask how transport and logistics be down since almost everything are for delivery now. So info. Um. Announced. But prior weeks, we are under ECQ, MECQ. Uh, transport is uh, basically uh, for essential goods initially. So, but that's why um, if you would look at uh, if if you would look at our projection, uh, we are still we are saying that logistics. May have um, may increase in demand because of the delivery services, but we are yet to see if the impact would be significant. So, yeah, um, it's still undetermined. But transportation, particularly given the travel restrictions, experienced um, they they are actually losing also. Um, good thing by next week we are already resuming. I think domestic flights. So they would start to resume operations, but still, I don't think it's for a hundred percent workforce. So workers in the sector would still be affected. Okay, thank you, Miss Grace. Okay, so I have uh, another question here, Miss Grace. Now, so this question is from Christian Ramas. Mm -hmm. Are there any demands for semiconductor fields during this pandemic? Uh, we are yet to find evidence or study particular to semiconductor, but um, it's that it's just that um, uh, these are tech parts. Some tech parts and some production would continue to to thrive, of course. But we are already uh, in the middle of the year, and half of the year was already. Uh, operations have been hampered by the, the pandemic. So we'll see for the rest of the year, but uh, so far we have uh, nothing on semiconductor. Okay. Um, by you. the way, let me just add, maybe it would address some questions that we have lined up. Um, because uh, while we were chatting earlier, no? <laughs> we were saying that uh, Jobs with 2022 was about to be... Um, uh, we we would have we would actually have a midterm update, given the fourth industrial revolution. It was already planned for this year, but now we have to adjust also our plan now that we have COVID. So um, we would definitely have a more in-depth study on the impact of COVID nineteen. So it would 
form cons it would require consultation with various um, stakeholders, uh, including WorkBank also, uh, other partner agencies. We would conduct survey also for the public and see how uh, the COVID-19 impacts the employment landscape. So hopefully we, could, we would be able to, to release it uh, in the next quarter. All right. so, so, so the questions on the other sectors would hopefully address, would be addressed by then. Yes, and I think that would be very helpful for Ms. Grace. And um, here's another one po. Uh, so madami, sabi po, madami pong mga construction workers ang napag-iwanan ng mga employer nila nung nag-ECQ. Nakikita po natin ngayon na emerging jobs ang um, construction. So it's one of them. May mga loss na po ba tayo that can better protect our daily wage construction workers? Okay. <laughs> um, well, actually, uh, there are, uh, what's this bill? I think it's Cures. The, call, uh, the bill is called Cures it, uh, at the House. It's a, bill, it's a House bill uh, referring to Cures Fund. So it fo its focus is actually on infrastructure projects. So taking from there, it's a recovery program from COVID also. It would require construction work. And also part of uh, Dollars Recovery Plan is uh, we have a, a LEAP program for construction also requiring or um, hoping that it would be the construction project would be more labor intensive so we could hire more workers for this, uh, for this transition. So for those na, 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 na stranded from the construction work, we understand that the construction would have to be, uh, the, the construction project would have to stop given the, the quarantine. But it also depends actually on, on, or it depends if the construction project will be able to resume operations already. But uh, there are, um, there are, uh, you can reach out to our to us if you want to to give us your information, specific information, and then we could refer you to to the appropriate office handling um, working conditions uh, issues. Okay. Uh, another question, Paul, Miss Grace. Since most of the business is happening online, does Dole have a plan? to work together with our telco, with the telco industry to improve our internet speed and of course cost. Yeah, I think we need to call the ICT. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we have, in terms of online platforms, uh, the DOLE actually manages or regulates the, we have the public employment recruitment agencies uh, sorry, private employment agencies. Uh, these are recruitment agencies that we, we manage. But uh, given the rise of online platforms for uh, online platforms for uh, recruitment, we are planning to release um, a code of ethics. There are still talks if e-recruitment would need a regulation or not. But I think we are doing uh, a release of code of ethics for e-recruitment to ensure that um, of course, the security of our applicants and uh, of our job seekers. And, and also, <clears throat> um, some are bogus um, sites. So it's really difficult to, to trace them, you see. So we'll, we are trying our best. But in terms of connectivity, um, we should ask the ICT <laughs> about that. Okay, thank you, Miss Grace. Parang na hotspot ka dun na. Ano nga eh? Naubo kaya ako. So uh, anyway, here's another very relevant question. Po, kasi kanina dun sa isang uh, deck uh, sa one part of your deck mentioned something about travel and hospitality. So here's another question: Is there an estimated time when travel and hospitality industry will be able to get back up again? Ah, okay. The OT question naman ito. <laughs> Department of Teresa. But um, I don't think they have uh, a specific period already. But most of the companies definitely would ha already have a business continuity plan for now. So uh, I heard 
but it's for the ITBPM industry that they already have a business continuity plan set for the rest of the year. It's already finished, but they are already starting with next year's uh, continuity plan. So I guess it's the same for the tourism industry. We could, we could hope that the larger uh, companies would be able to help the workers uh, given this uh, time of crisis. So, but of course, you already heard about uh, CADA and other, um, other uh, tourism establishments. So, um, hopefully by within the year, we'll be able to bounce back. Um, even NEDA projected that by next year, we'll be able to bounce back already. So yes, hopefully by end of the year. Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, medyo mahirap nga po talaga yun. Uh, Christian? Okay, so uh, I have another question here from Nikki, uh, Nick Eva. So what kind of jobs will be available for agribusiness? Okay, for agribusiness, uh, there are a lot of small and micro enterprises engaging in agribusiness already. So I think uh, promote na rin ako. Go Negosyo is actually doing good in this. Um, there are a lot of stuff. It's not just farming or fishing. There are a lot of organic business going on. So um it would actually boom given that um uh food is an essential thing it's one of the essential uh thing during the pandemic and also uh as mentioned earlier the department of agriculture launched the plant 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 program aligned with the build 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 so and then we have also the balik provincia program so hopefully uh we think that agribusiness would continue to thrive uh, during uh, at the post-pandemic uh, scenario. Thank you, Miss Grace. And yes, I agree. I even have friends na talagang nag-focus na din sila sa ano, planting, yes. lalo yung mga makakain nila, ganun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so here's another question po from Miss Teresa De Mateo. So, what is the status of business processing outsourcing? I remember you mentioned something about it uh, in your slides, but can you give us more information about it? Okay, IBPAP actually has, well, you are all familiar with IBPAP. It's the Association of I, uh, ITBPM or ITBPO um, company. So, in the Philippines. So they're actually how, as we mentioned earlier, ITBPM is the most to be able to thrive given the flexibility in on how they handle the work and how you do work. So also um, there's a lot of opportunities for ITBPM. Just earlier I saw an article saying that the Philippines ranked six among the largest source of online labor. So, but that also involves the gig economy, the giggers. Uh, but still, um, online work, ITBPM would continue to thrive. Uh, they were actually able to, um, they were actually able to manage doing hybrid type of work. Some are working, or sorry, blended type of work. Some are working from home. They have remote offices. Some of them, they stayed in hotels. Some have satellite offices to continue working. And ITBPM is seen to be one of the one of the sectors that would run the economy or, or help the economy bounce back after the pandemic. So um, and also given the digital transformation, there are a lot of companies that would really transform already. They have no choice but to 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 to, to transform digitally so the business operations would have to be adjusting also and then there's a boom in analytics data science is also in demand um what else there's a lot of, of opportunities for ITBPM actually even the transcription all the online work even virtual assistant project management is also uh, could be done or yeah could be done in ITBPM so 
yeah, there are a lot of uh, the ITBPM would be the first actually to be able to survive uh, post pandemic. Okay, so thank you very much for that, Ms. Grace. Uh, another question, this time from Nikki Passion. What sector do you think will be most beneficial in helping create a more stable means of income for street vendors and small-scale sellers who have been economically devastated by the pandemic? Okay. Actually, we have a lot of government agencies are helping the small businesses, livelihood businesses, even Dollis offering livelihood programs. DTI is offering a lot of assistance for the MSMEs, including the micro enterprises. Um, the DOT would use to have training programs also or assistance programs for the tourism sectors. Even during the Boracay period, DOT has been very helpful. Um, DOST also offers training programs for, for these workers, uh, like meat processing and all that. So we have a lot of um, livelihood opportunities or livelihood um, uh, programs to assist these types of workers. Uh, it's just a matter of asking the agencies, going to the agencies to, to apply or avail the assistance. Okay, thank you, Ms. Grace. Yeah, and I agree that that was one of the most timely questions. Not really the most, but one of the more timely questions talaga kasi ang dami talagang naapektuhan. And um, speaking of naapektuhan po, so here's another uh, question naman from Ms. Lizelle Dublas. And it's really something na took us all for a spin. So what is the best way to convince traditional employers to allow work from home since some of them are still not open to the idea? Okay. Actually, everyone's saying that we have no choice now, but uh, because we are already uh, thrusting, we are already thrust into this fourth industrial revolution. And given the COVID-19 protocols, strict health protocols, we have to do telework or telecommuting or work from home. So it's not a matter of convincing the employer already. It's more of how are we going to resume operations if we are not able to do physical reporting given the restrictions. So uh, that's why earlier we mentioned that creativity and innovation is also one of a critical skill because we would have to adjust. It's already here to stay. So it's not a matter of convincing anymore. Uh, it's more of... Uh, uh, seeing um, possibilities, having options on how to better deliver or operate the business. But of course, work from home would not, um, it's not um, uh, even, there's a study actually that the Philippines would only have 25 to 27% of jobs that can be done at home. So there's, there's still, we still need time to transition, of course. And but telecommuting is now being taken more seriously by a lot of uh, establishments. So um, even in our monitoring of um, COVID-related displacement, there's still there are a lot of flexible work arrangements um, being implemented uh, in the in various uh, establishments. And apart from that, alternative work, other alternative work arrangements are being used so but for now of course the employers would have to weigh they have to go to do um uh, an analysis of course if they would if they have the absorptive capacity to do that to do telework and of course to accommodate uh, as many workers as possible to save jobs Thank you, Ms. Grace. Actually, Christian, I, I, I like what Ms. Grace mentioned about being creative. I'm not sure if you saw this in the news. Yung, I forgot which burger chain that was. Yung parang ginawa nila is may, ano, may plastic. Pwede yung brand. <laughs> promote natin. Hindi <laughs> ko alam, pwede po. Pero basta wala ko yung may, may slide pa siyang ganun na para okay. at least less contact. So tuloy-tuloy pa din yung, ano, yung work nila, which is really creative. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, you mentioned Kanina, Miss Grace, the, the one of most of the emerging jobs are under the IT sector. No? So I, I have a question here from Sara de los Santos Gabriel. Is it safe to say that we should encourage our incoming tertiary students to take up IT courses? Well, um, ITBPM is already our top keg or key employment generator. And as mentioned earlier, our jobs fit report would help. Uh, the intention is actually to help students make informed career decisions. So yes, uh, I would say ITBPM would continue to flourish. And um, it would be good if um, uh, digital skills would be further uh, developed not only the soft skills, but, soft, but also technical skills. So if they decide to, to do um, or to take up IT-related courses, that would help also. But still, let's not forget that it's not all about technical skills that is required nowadays. So a good balance of technical skills and soft skills would help future-proof, hopefully, our job seekers or students, as you say. Thank you, Ms. Grace. And also, I remember may, may, ano kasi eh, may, may research din ng Dolly na yung LMI po ba? Tama po, Ms. Grace? Mm -hmm. Na yung parang uh, you'll be getting research-based uh, input ng kung ano yung emerging na mga courses na pwedeng itake for specific skills or yes. jobs. So I think that's also very helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we have a, we have well not really controversial, but it's happening nowadays. Po from Miss Madonna Carino, what is the point of view of Dole regarding private employers forcing employees to resign instead of retrenchment due to COVID nineteen? Hala, controversial nga yan. <laughs> Actually, it's a labor, uh, sorry, it's a working condition issue. And these types of cases must, uh, we have our single entry approach desks in our regional offices. So, because these are case to case basis and there is no one size fits all answer for this. So, if they have concerns related to that, they need to approach our regional, um, we call it Sena desks. Uh, so they can clearly state their circumstance and then um, uh, they could be provided technical assistance at our regional and field offices. So pwede magsumbong. So, so Miss Madonna, so kung halimbawang kayo na ano niyo yun, <laughs> Actually, they can yun. also call one three, hotline 1349. That's the Dole hotline. Uh, we have call center agents manning those lines. We have, I don't know how many lines now, but we've increased it with the COVID-19. Um, with with COVID-19, so uh, you could also uh, lodge your complaint at hotline 1349. You know what, Miss Grace, it's a good thing no, na na-mention mo yung hotline. Me personally, nakatawag na ako sa Dolly hotline. And what I can say is, they are really accommodating. As in, when, when you say customer service, they really know how to communicate and discuss things with, with, the, uh, with the caller or kung sino man yung ng tulong through the hotline sa Dole. Wow, so, thank you. Yes. So I have another question here, no, Miss Grace. This time from Ermaline Vinoya. If you notice, uh, Miss Grace, if you, if you go to Facebook, kasi marami ka makikita doon na sponsored ads regarding... Uh, trading, uh, CAPTCHA, and coding. So, question niya is, karamihan po sa makikita sa Facebook na online job ay mga Bitcoin mining, CAPTCHA, and coding, etc. Recommended po ba ng Dole na work po sa mga ganong online platform para maka-earn while we are still in quarantine? Okay. In terms of online jobs, I think everyone should be very careful when engaging with these platforms. Uh, we have to be extra mindful of the security um, or even the interface itself. Even the banks would say, don't just give your credit card numbers. So 
And also, during this time, there are a lot of ano ba, opportunista na well, everyone is in crisis, but of course, it's hindi naman makatao yun. But there are still those, uh, some of those doing that. So, our advice is for them to be very extra careful when dealing with online jobs. Just go to registered or recognized um, platforms, online platforms to to do jobs. So, very sketchy kasi most of the of, uh, Bitcoin and all that. I have nothing against it personally, but um, yeah, our advice is to just be very extra careful. Uh, if you find something like this, don't just give your information. Uh, talk to someone knowledgeable about it. Check if the if this site or if this provider is really authentic or not bogus. So you could be, you could also protect yourself from uh, from any damage or any um, how do you say it, ba? Because <laughs> uh, um, even online jobs. There are some job portals that, that's why we are also um, advocating also for e-recruitment uh, code of ethics to also protect the, the online job seeker. Actually, tama-tama yung sinaba nyo, no, Ms. Grace. No? Uh, I guess, para sa mga naghahanap ng online jobs, it's really better for them to do research first. Uh, marami na mga yes. websites were in, yes, makikita nila yung mga actual reviews about that Bitcoin link or yung CAPTCHA. And I, I suggest they do research first before they start clicking away. Yeah. Nowadays, you, talagang yung think before you click is already a mantra na dapat. Because Tama. very dangerous talaga nowadays given the technology. But of course, there are pros and cons in technology. Pero syempre, uh, on that end, dapat extra careful lang lagi. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Grace. Totoo yan. And um, so here's an interesting question that I think we, we can also have a say in this. So from Ms. Annie Landicho, so can we have free trainings for online work since it is booming? Ayan, work back. <laughs> <laughs> online training? On what topic po kaya? Well, um... Uh, there are a lot of online trainings available online. There are a lot of providers. Uh, to name a few, we have Coursera. There's LinkedIn. LinkedIn. There is FutureLearn. There is what else? Pa? Udacity, Iversity, Open University. There are a lot of available um, open course uh, platforms that you could access. You just have to search what topic or what skill you want to acquire. Um, even the top schools are offering free courses nowadays, Harvard and other schools. So just take advantage of this opportunity to, to do it. So we have, um, we, as we try to transition and adjust to the new normal, um, we think that uh, we are not being very productive. So why not enroll in a free course? And then you get yourself a certificate or diploma after completion. So also you acquired a new skill of your liking. That's a more important thing. So yeah, take advantage of all these free courses online. Right. Thank you, Miss Grace. And since the banggit mo na, <laughs> ayun, so Ayana. yes, <laughs> WorkBank also provides free trainings. And uh, before po kasi we were doing it uh, on site. So kailangan po punta sila sa venue for a specific training. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and you've also mentioned dapat creative ka. So we tried to be creative as well. So for those who are watching us today, so we have an upcoming training on June 20. So this will be on MS Excel training. Mm -hmm. So all you need to do is have a WorkBank account, just sign up, and then um, make sure to complete your profile as much as possible so that you can participate in that training. And of course, after that, yung katulad po ng sabi niyo, Miss Grace, they will get an e-certificate. Ayun. That's nice. Okay, so, uh, Miss Grace, I have another question here. Pero this one is about agency. So, we are, this is from Jacob Torsilino, by the way. We are one of the employees na napabayaan po ng agency namin. Tinanggal po kami during COVID pandemic. 
Meron po ba kayong mga programa para po sa amin? Okay. Uh, during pandemic, um, they're asking for a program na for assistance. Because I'm thinking they could already they could also um, reach out to our regional and field offices. You can check the Dole website. We have our directory there. You can reach out to the nearest uh, regional, field, or uh, provincial office, so they can ask for assistance, specific assistance to uh, assistance specific to their needs. We have livelihood programs also available if if they are interested in doing that. But of course, we follow guidelines and there's a process for application. So it's best that they reach out to our regional and field offices for that. Thank you, Ms. Grace. And totoo yun. So kumbaga, if you have a problem, so make sure na ano, we reach out to the right department. And it's great that Dole is here with us. So thank you for those insights, uh, Ms. Grace. Um. Here's another one. Uh, it's almost similar. It's from Ms. Ivril Esmenia. Do we have a projected unemployment rate for this year due to COVID-19? And what's the plan of DOLE on how to assist those affected employees during this transition period? Okay. Actually, the unemployment rate, uh, I'm not sure if the PSA or NEDA has released anything on that already, but uh, we are actually, we have this publication recently, our labor market trends, uh, understanding recession and unemployment. So uh, they are saying that the our last recession was in 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. And um, given a recession would happen only after two uh, consecutive quarters of dipping GDP. So uh, we are expecting a spike in unemployment given the COVID situation. But per NEDA, there's a good outlook for next year or even at NEDA and PSA's advice on that actually. But for recovery, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we have submitted our uh, employment recovery plan to Congress. Uh, there are some bills that have already adopted our proposals and hopefully those um, legislation would uh, come to fruition so we could provide the necessary assistance uh, to our affected workers. It's nice to hear, no, Ms. Grace, that NEDA has already filed the, the bill and we're just really waiting for a fruition. At least, di ba, merong ina-expect yung mga tao na, na wala ng trabaho. Yeah, so, and this time hopefully um, uh, in the proposed bills, there are specific budget allocation already for, for Dole. So that's good. It's good news for us also. <clears throat> okay, nice. Okay, so, uh, napanood ko po kasi last time, no? uh, yung mga OFWs natin na naka na ng bansa and they were placed under quarantine. This question is, is related to that. So, I have a question from Laling de los Arcos. Can a company request a list from Dole to those OFWs who went home and got retrenched from their employers for the purpose that you know they may be considered for unemployment in the other companies? You mean they want to hire the unemployed? OFWs, is that it? Opo, opo. So, for example, um, uh, let's say... Sigo, sigo. Yeah, actually, uh, we have uh, earlier, uh, the secretary launched the command center for OFWs. Um, we have actually, there's, an, there's a plan actually for, to have the profile already of the returning OFWs to be submitted to the DOLE or uh, to the DOLE so that um, it could help facilitate already and profile them, of course. And if they are interested to, to, get, uh, to find another job, they could be referred also to our public employment service offices. These, um, these are LGU-based. These are what we call PESOS, and they maintain a registry of job openings in the area. So hopefully, um, the matching, the job matching could happen at that level. So they could reach out again, uh, you can check the website for our directory of regional and field offices. 
Ayan. At least may ano, alam natin na there's an assistance na mangyayari. Thanks for that, Miss Grace. Um, probably this will be the second to the last question. So this is from Russ. Uh, what is the Dolles plan for the volume of returning OFWs, displaced formal workers, and affected informal workers who are deprived of income? Yeah. yeah. Uh, as mentioned, we have the Dolly Employment Recovery Plan. There are a lot. There are various uh, programs specific to formal sector workers, informal sector workers, and OFWs. Uh, so, uh, but we couldn't give uh, the details yet, as these are not yet approved. We've only submitted our proposal to the Congress, and once this is adapted by the Congress, the details would already be there. Uh, we are looking at the Cures Fund. And also, we are looking at the PESA, the Philippine Employment um, Stimulus Act. So maybe they could check that out for, for the specific um, uh, interventions post-COVID or during the recovery. That would be very helpful, no, Ms. Grace. Thank you very much. I think this is the, the last question huh, for this session. Uh, this one is from... Pauline Cabrera Francisco. So hi BLE, would it be possible for Dole to provide a system database through link clicking where displaced workers and actively seeking for work can access to be managed by the Public Employment Service Office in the LGU? With this, we could monitor the number of affected workers and how we could address this through employment generation, referral, livelihood, training, and other employment medium. Wow, very specific. Yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, we do have the field job nets that gov.ph. You could check that out. That's the official job portal of the department. So uh, the vacancies available at the pesos are already there. So they could check the specific area and then what type of work they would like to apply for. So please check out philjobnet.gov.ph. All right. Well, thank you again, Ms. Gray. So um, it was a good hour. So thank you very much for your time. So um, and dami talagang questions where we can only accommodate so much. But thank you very much for giving us your insights about this. And thank you. Dole BLE for joining us today. So the discussion has been very insightful and will be a great guide for all of us in the labor force moving forward. While many of us have lost jobs, this is a reminder that there is hope that we can only go up when we are down. Thank you, WorkBank. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And if you have lost your job because of the pandemic, please be assured that there are job opportunities out there. Sign up to WorkBank where you can find thousands of job vacancies from different companies in the Philippines. And some are even work from home jobs, which will probably be the new normal for most. Remember, WorkBank is the only job site that lets you job hunt with benefits. We provide free trainings to help you acquire new skills and job application support like GrabRide discounts to your job interviews. Sign up today on workbank.com. Thank you and you have a good weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you.